Plain and simple, can AI help you to write your PhD thesis? This is the main basis of today's video where we talk about how the rise of AI might actually help a lot of researchers, especially PhD students, and in particular, in this video, your actual thesis. Now, to add a bit of context, uh, a lot of the time in the past couple of months, I've been working in a coffee shop just because I like the vibe and I like, you know, coffee in general and it's a nice ambiance a nice place to study be creative and also think whether it's writing papers or making videos like this and i bumped into a medical doctor who was sitting next to me and we got to talking and he told me about chat gpt so firstly his name is ash his linkedin is very active have a follow do check him out um, very interesting articles and he is a really avid writer so i'm keen to read some of it myself and also encourage all of you to do the same. So his Substack and his LinkedIn profile is in the description box below. But the focus now is ChatGPT, which you can see on the screen now. It is a very new AI tool that has been a massive craze across all of the creator space, tech space, info space, anything plus space. We'll probably be talking about ChatGPT in the past couple of months. So what is it? So essentially it is an AI tool that kind of talks to you in a kind of chat based format compared to other types of formats. So just a caveat, I am not an artificial intelligence expert, not even close in an expert in anything, but I'm just sharing my advice to help you understand how this AI tool can be useful for researchers. So ChatGPT is used, I'm going to read it because I'm not going to be able to remember, is used for optimizing language models for dialogue. Now the term GPT is generative pre-transformer. Now, all of that basically means I have no idea. All I know is that this AI tool has been a crazy in the notion that a lot of people are asking it questions and it's given really detailed answers. So forget all the theory, forget all the science behind it because this is not what the video is about. Let me just show you an example of what it actually does. I actually told it to give me a YouTube script for a very simple video that I might do, which is how to be productive for PhD students. And as you can see now on the screen, it gave me very succinct examples that are very in line with what I've spoken about on my Instagram page, um, ambia.phd here, if you want to follow. So I was blown away. A lot of people are asking ChatGPT to write essays, to write YouTube scripts, to write, you know, actual copywriting, to write breakdowns of things. The very heavy thinking processes that would take a lot of time for somebody to Google, find all the articles, find all the points and collate it together. This ChatGPT is actually doing it. So the question dawned on me, can this actually help write your PhD thesis? Now the answer is yes and no. So let's start with the no part in this part. But the no part is actually related to what actually a PhD thesis really is. Now, majority of a thesis is generally your own new findings, new results that hasn't been looked at before. That's the whole notion of the novelty. Now, nobody would have done your experiment in the same manner, in the same way to gather the same results. So it's hard for any AI to kind of find that and scouring the internet. Papers, thesis, books, it's hard to find what you, what you have in your thesis actually. So from that notion, no, I don't think AI is that advanced yet to computate models and experiments that are in real time for you to actually copy and use. So from the results section of your thesis, obviously not. And it's very hard for anything to kind of replicate what you've done in the lab or with participants. Again, looking at it from qualitative research, it's very hard for some, some AI to actually computate somebody's perceptions from the participants that you have. So you can see from that point of view, it's very hard for any AI tool, especially ChatGPT, to write your results for you. However, there is a large part of your thesis that ChatGPT can help, and I'm really interested to talk about this. What I'm talking about, it is your introduction. Now we know a large chunk of a thesis is an introduction where you're setting the scene of which you answer the questions throughout your rest of your thesis, right? You plot rhetorical questions and you plant the seeds in your thesis, uh, in your introduction, sorry, about, right, is this useful? Why did it do this? What's the point of this? And then you answer them via your results. Now, a lot of that is you collating papers across the internet, across the journals, across books, and you combinate, you know, contrast and compare, pros and cons, setting the seam, explaining all the gaps. All of this is actually found on, obviously nowadays we use the internet, not just books. And this is where ChatGPT can really help. And I want to give you an example of to why. What you can do right here, as I'm doing right now, now while I'm recording this, I have not done this, I'm going to type this in post and show it. Because that's how confident I am 
that ChatGPT will be able to answer this question. Just like I did in my PhD thesis, I explained the notions of the pro and cons of anti-angiogenic therapy. So for those of you who don't know, anti-angiogenic therapy is basically just a fancy term of therapies and medications and drugs that are used to target vasculature, so blood vessels that shouldn't be there in the first place. In particular, vasculature that shouldn't be there, and you're trying to regress it, stop it from happening, and stopping it from getting worse. So I would now ask ChatGPT, what are the benefits of anti-angiogenic therapy? Now, I presume it's going to give you a good, succinct list or some examples as to the benefits of it. What it is, what are the benefits. Now, if you did not do any research and you're just somebody new, the level of information ChatGPT, this AI tool will be able to gather, is remarkable. I could then also ask, what are the seven hallmarks of cancer? I presume ChatGPT will be able to tell me that in succinct examples. Another example is, give me the breakdown as to what polyphenols are, what are flavonoids, what are calcones? These are questions that I could ask ChatGPT and it will give me certain answers. Yes, you won't be able to reference these because we won't know where it's coming from. And that is a whole separate video, a separate argument that a lot of people have been talking about. I'll link those videos in. As to is ChatGPT actually sourcing these from articles and not actually crediting them? But in terms of basic information that would take you a little bit of, of a time to scour the internet for, ChatGPT can be really, really handy for exactly that. So then you might be wondering, will I be using ChatGPT in the future? Yes, definitely. And here's why. Just like the example I just showed you in my PhD thesis, I also think that any research I'll be doing this year and in the future, in terms of understanding the basic concepts, I could ask ChatGPT to give me some insights into this, the benefits, the disadvantages, the, the recent emergencies, the changes, what are these definitions as well. And I know we can use Google for this as well. But getting more detailed answers and more things that would require you to do a lot of self-searching, ChatGPT can be really helpful. And also that's the research hat on, but the creator hat on will be very useful. A lot of creators are already using ChatGPT to help devise scripts and be a great foundation to then build upon. MKPHD, who's a very famous tech YouTuber who I follow a lot, showed that ChatGPT was helping to write a YouTube script, which he then used in a YouTube video. This is somebody who has over 15 million subscribers and very well known across the world, using an AI tool to help craft the creative side of life. So whether it's YouTube scripts, whether it's Instagram posts, whether it's um, emails, ChatGPT can be really good to accelerate that initial brainstorming and creative process, which then you can build upon and mold towards what you need to. So it's helping that bit that would probably take a couple of hours down to maybe a couple of minutes, which is huge for creators. So yes, I will definitely be using ChatGPT. I would love to learn more. I'm going to be doing my own homework. I urge you also to do the same. So guys, let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts on ChatGPT are. Do you think you can use it? Not, do you think it's really scary? Is it just a glorified Google? No disrespect to ChatGPT. I don't agree with that, but I've had some comments around that. So let me know what you think about it and if you will use it as a researcher. But in any case, I shall see you in the next video. Hope you enjoyed this one. Do like, do subscribe. I shall see you soon. Take care.